Hello everybody, my name is Bob, and this is a KSP Quickie with Bob. Uh, now, the, the Holy Grail in rocket propulsion is a system that is both high thrust and high efficiency. Uh, the um, nuclear rocket that we tested uh, last time was pre is pretty high efficiency, um, but even that's not that high a thrust. Uh, so, uh, to have high thrust and high efficiency at the same time uh, is sort of the Holy Grail of rocket propulsion. And they actually made a rocket, or actually designed a rocket back, uh, uh, back that had the, those qualities. And they designed it back in the 1950s. Uh, there are some issues with the design. Um, it's banned by several test ban treaties. Um, but uh, in theory, it would have worked. Uh, in theory, so it would still work. There's a few little details that need to be worked out. The, the whole... Um, the whole well let me just tell you what it is it's um, nuclear pulse propulsion uh, what is nuclear pulse pulse propulsion it is uh, a basically a design as uh, it was designed in a project called project orion uh, and basically it shoots little atomic bombs out the back of the <laughs> of the uh, rocket uh, the the bombs explode and that pushes the uh, the rocket forward actually the, um, the little atomic bombs are actually uh, which you we might consider to be shaped nuclear charges. In other words, they don't just simply blow up back there, um, because that would rel be relatively uh, inefficient as far as delivering thrust uh, to, the, to, the, uh, um, to the spaceship. Uh, what it is, is it's actually a nuclear-shaped charge uh, that, um, uh, that blows a, uh, vaporizes a tungsten propellant and spits it at the back of the ro rocket engine, back of the, back of the spaceship, against a pusher, pusher plate. The pusher plate is pushed forward, and then this sort of long shock, shock absorber system uh, kind of, you know, absorbs the immediate shock of this nuclear explosion, um, and uh, and then it comes and it comes back and, and it repeats. Uh, and um, uh, nuclear explosions in space are a little bit different from nuclear explosions on the Earth. Uh, on the Earth, uh, a nuclear bomb is surrounded by air, so it immediately superheats that air, and that air goes on to wreck massive destruction. Uh, well, the effects are still certainly impressive in space as far as radiation goes, um, but um, not quite as much on the um, the shock wave type stuff, which there's no, no air in space, so there's not much of a shock wave. Um, uh, so what the actual shape charges do is, uh, it's it's sort of like the um, nuclear bomb is, is in a little cup uh, of um, like depleted uranium, uh, it explodes, and then for a, for a microsecond, uh, it contains the the explosion uh, and directs it into uh, a, a a material that absorbs the X rays in the bomb in the explosion that the, that the the bomb emits, um, uh, and that superheats, vaporizes the tungsten, pushes it out towards the pusher plate, and that that's what provides the uh, thrust. Uh, and uh, this design could have, in theory. Uh, render, uh, rendered uh, us with a ship that would uh, not only simply simply have high efficiency, like an ion engine, but it would also have high thrust. And they, they say that uh, uh, if you want to do a one-way flyby of Alpha Centauri with this design, you could have done it in 44 years. Now, if you wanted to st stick around there uh, and um, uh, you know explore a bit, you'd, uh, that'd be, that would reduce the or increase the amount of time it would take to about 80 years. But you know, if we if we were making these things all the time, we would no doubt get better at it to where you know we could do a a travel to or send a probe to Alpha Centauri and keep it there, you know, to to, to look around uh, and only take about 40 years. So uh, it's an amazing uh, propulsion system. Uh, it is currently banned by several treaties uh, regarding the nuclearization of space um, and um, there's also another problem, which is these these vessels, in order to withstand the nuclear explosions going off behind them, have to be massive. I mean, literally battleship type weights, great big huge ships, uh, and uh, there's a problem of how you get those things into space to begin with. Uh, and of course, the the original uh, the idea is, hey, we'll just detonate the explosions in the atmosphere, <laughs> uh, which would cause, of course, fallout. Um, so, I mean, it, you know, depending on your uh, definition of acceptable risk, if you, if you 
detonated it thing, uh, but if you lifted the thing up with like solid rockets or whatever, up to you know up in the atmosphere a little base ways, and then start shooting off the the nukes, um, then um, uh, potentially the, the the amount of fallout would not be significant. Um, it would they they rec they su suggested that there would, there would be ten ca additional cancer years cancer deaths. Uh, per year of of use of this, you know, for, for over the whole world, uh, so um, all depends on your your definition of acceptable uh, risk. Uh, of course, uh, you could lift the whole thing up into to space, and not have to worry about the the fallout too much. Um, but um, again, these were massive, massive vehicles, um, vehicles that could have taken us to Mars in a couple of weeks. Not, not uh, you know, a year to get just to get there, um, as as is currently envisioned. You know, with current technology, let's say with um, nuclear thermal rockets, you know, it would take a year to get there. They spend a year at Mars because of the you know the, the way the orbits work, and then a year coming back. Well, uh, an Orion uh, spaceship would just just go, it would just you know, the hell with efficient Hallman ellipses and all that. Just just go, get there a couple of weeks, you know, a few weeks. Uh, stay there however long, long you want to, you know, for, for until the next reasonably decent uh, uh, orbit comes along, and uh, then leave. Uh, so it would have, if we had done it, um, and it would, again, this was a system planned in the 1950s, um, it could have revolutionized uh, our access to space. Uh, there's the little atomic bomb things, and the fact that back then the Soviet Union would not have been too kosher on us lifting up a giant spaceship containing 800 small nuclear bombs, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's a very very intriguing um, design and w one that uh, really can't be beat for uh, combining high thrust and high efficiency to this day. Uh, but they never created a, like a test bed for any of it for anything. They they created a a test using conventional explosives just to you know see how it would work and it worked. That test worked fine. So, but they've never like tried to to do an actual size mock up or anything like that. So there's a whole lot of unknowns. Um, but in theory, anyway, it would be a tremendous um, uh, advance in uh, our uh, current capabilities in space. Uh, so, uh, and I have a mod, and I apologize. I don't know who who made the mod. It's it's been a while. If this is your mod, uh, please leave a comment, and I will be happy to uh, acknowledge you in the comments. Um, and, all right, let's go. Okay, here we are. I've not tested this one yet. Um, I did do a little test one just to see how, how it works, how it goes. Um, but, uh, I've not tried it with people in it. I've not tried this particular version of the rocket, uh, so we'll find out. Uh, I'm, I've got some, um, boost rockets on it because I, uh, I've discovered that, uh, using this thing in the Ryan engine in the atmosphere has some shortcomings. That I want to try to avoid, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, SAS on. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, so far so good. All systems nominal. Slight spin going on, but nothing to worry about. Uh, going a little fast, maybe she throttle back. Looks like the fuels that those boosters are going to be with us through the gravity turn, which represents a bit of a problem because I didn't put any kind of subtrons on those. So we'll see how that goes. Bend over, or bend over, tilt over. No, 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 no. Let's go ahead and jettison those. Okay, I don't suppose you'd want to like turn over at all. Ok, 
come on. Okay. Doing fine now. All systems appear to be nominal. Not the most stable thing in the world. Uh, a little bit of atmospheric heating. A lot of atmospheric heating. Looks like this is probably going to get us to orbit, it would appear. Or at least to a point where we can... to our apogee and then we will circularize the orbit <laughs> okay uh, you see here on the pusher plate I've got actually uh, some uh, landing legs uh, they may blow off in all the uh, excitement uh, but I, I've actually landed um, a, a different model of this without people on it uh, just by sitting it on the pusher plate when I go to the, go to the moon so um, uh, we shall see how that goes it is time for us to begin our burn Good enough. And here we go. Let's go ahead and throttle down a little bit first. past our apoapsis. Let's go ahead and raise up a little bit. Uh, there appears to be a little bit of a gap uh, sometimes. I, I don't know whether that's a misfire or what that is.
Okay. We've got orbit. And still 1,200 nukes to go. All right. Oh, did I put some kind of power production? Yeah, I'll put RPGs. RTGs. Uh, so we're good. Uh, let's go to the moon. Okay, we're getting set up for our lunar departure. Uh, it should be good. Go ahead and throttle it all the way up. It probably shouldn't look like that. I mean, in, in real, if you really had one of these, it wouldn't look like that. Also, as you can see, it kind of comes down in increments. Um, uh, so, um, you, you may might be good uh, to have uh, rockets like these on the sides to um, uh, to use for fine adjustments because it's not really a, a fine adjustment type of thing here. Nothing subtle about it at all. And you should be able to see the, the projectile coming out of there. Well, it could come out pretty fast. Uh, do a do a, a YouTube search for Project Orion. You should be able to find some uh, pretty cool stuff on there. All right, that's all. And we actually survived it somehow. They survived it too. Amazingly enough, they're all alive. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, we'll turn off the uh, the nukes right now. Turn on our. I said turn off the nukes right now. Turn on the uh, these. Uh, and uh, we'll do a little bit of a fine adjustment here with the rocket engines. Okay, we're heading up to our lunar orbital insertion. Uh, we're about lined up here. I don't think it's going to take two minutes, so let's just kind of wait a second. Let's time expand a little bit. Let's try about there. Audio weirdness. That should be close enough. Yeah, good enough. All right, we'll get lined up on our crater here, and we will go in for a landing. <laughs> okay, we've done our orbital correction burn. Now we're gonna head up to uh, start our descent. Kind of has a flash bulb effect going on on the surface of the moon here. All right, good enough. A 
We'll get over the crater and then we will start our descent. Let's go ahead and what we're trying to do now. Audio, weird audio. Uh, what we're trying to do now is um, get to where we're going straight up and down pretty much. That'll do for now. We're at 9,000 meters. Let's kind of drop in. Okay. Kind of landing on that crater edge, so I'm not that happy about that. Go ahead and kind of scooch over a little bit. Now let's turn on our ICS. Let's, let's not do that, no. Bad thing to have happen at this point. Uh, look at my nav ball, not, not at my, not at myself. We're just going to have to land where we land. Shit, no, 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 no.
Okay. I think I'm heading sort of in the right direction now. Still not over that crater, am I? It probably goes without saying this is a big, big ass lumbering beast. Um, all right, let's drop down. When we get near the uh, near the ground here, uh, we will uh, switch over to our uh, conventional engines. Turn these off, turn these on. Gear down. No, turn these off. Thank you. Let's take the landing. Come on. You got it. We got it. Okay. All right, Jebediah. Pop out there and uh, take a bow. there Jim get some radiation there on you I know how you like that you love it you love it you love that radiation
Yeah, he's happy. He's a happy guy. He's a happy guy. Alright, that's all for right now. Until next time, hasta la vista. Adios.